in the witching hour, whatever the right words are. Excuse me. Welcome everyone to the October 6, 2020 uh, Wenham uh, Board of Selectmen meeting. It's now 6.30 p.m. and that uh, we're going to begin with um, uh, announcements. Announcements. I got a copy for you, Jack, if you want to read the screen. Okay. <clears throat> this is not welcome news, but probably anticipated news. Uh, we have a wa mandatory water ban is extended. I've never seen this in my years here in London, but I've never seen it so dry either. At the September 23rd, 2020 meeting, the uh, Wenham Water Board, based on a statewide declaration of level two significant drought, is advised by the Mass Drought Management Task Force. Our Water Commission voted to extend the water ban limiting all non-essential outdoor water use until further notice. The Water Commission will provide an update on this advisory after the next meeting in two weeks. So there you go. Uh, which is, of course, you can use sprinklers. Uh, uh, I'm a, I'm a uh, 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 expand yep. on that. Yeah. Uh, so those who don't know or don't pay attention to the water ban, uh, that uh, uh, you cannot use sprinklers anytime, but you can hand water between 5 p.m. and 9 a.m. the next morning. And that uh, people do do that. So uh, other than that, it's not allowed. Uh, so uh, I know there's a lot of households in my area uh, who aren't paying any attention to that at all. And that uh, not so much uh, Morgan and uh, Kimball, but uh, uh, you know, <clears throat> not too far away and they have lush green lawns and they've had it all summer long. And that applies to private wells as well, by the way. So we have a compliance issue, I think. And I think we should address that next year. Because it's not fair for the people who actually uh, uh, adhere to the water ban to see some of them as having a, a fully lush green lawn with a water sprinklers going on at 4 a.m. in the morning or whatever time. It's just not fair. Um, all right, there's a dry flu flu clinic. Okay, we have a drive through flu clinic. That's a tongue twister at Bev at Buca School. It requires registration on October 14th from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. The announcement is the Wenham Board of Health will hold its annual flu clinic on Wednesday, October 14th at 36 p.m. as a drive-through at Buker Elementary School and by appointment only. To request an appointment, submit your name and information via Google, the, the Google form available at wenhammass.gov slash flu, F-L-U, or by calling the Board of Health at 978-468-5520, extension 4. Appointment requests will receive a response within 48 hours and are not guaranteed based on number of available doses. So residents are urged to request an appointment as soon as possible. So Jack, a, a question I have for either you or Anthony, because uh, I'm not sure. Uh, so this is for the regular flu uh, yeah. shots? Yeah. All right, so they call the town hall and make an appointment uh, to do this. Correct. Okay. Yeah, right. And so uh, there are two types of flu shots. Uh, for seniors, you can get the um, high dose one. And, uh, oh, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. You can also okay. get it at uh, CVS, by the way. <laughs> Call for an appointment. And that uh, if you have Medicare, it's free. And that, uh, anyway, so uh, that's what I did. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next is very important special town meeting at Pingree Park, Saturday, October 17th at 10 a.m. Uh, the town will hold a special town meeting on Saturday, October 17th at 10 a.m. Under, under a tent in Pingree Park. Visit wenhammass.gov slash town meeting for all the details, including the warrant for the town meeting. Warrants will be delivered to all households via United Parcel Service, UPS, USPS, mail later this week. Uh, I understand the post office is a little slow these days, so it might not be till early next week. I don't know. And the warrant will be held virtually via Zoom on Tuesday, October 13th at 7 p.m., uh, which is conducted by our Finance and Advisory Committee. Contact the Town Administrator's Office at 978-468-5520, extension 2, with questions. Uh, so next announcement is early voting at Town Hall, October 17th through October 30th. In-person voting begins October 17th at Town Hall and continues through October 30th. Please visit wenamass.gov slash elections 
uh, or for the complete schedule and all of the November 3rd election information, contact town clerk, Diane Bucco, 978-468-5520, extension one, or D Bucco, D-B-U-C-C-O, at wenamass.gov with any questions. Jack, Gary here, a question? Yeah. Yes, I think uh, if Diane's on the line, I've had several questions about the absentee ballots too. And I yeah. think those came in today. Did you see those, Anthony, or is Diane on the line? Uh, Diane is on the line. I am here. That's good. And Gary, I have to tell you that the ballots came in today. Good, good. <laughs> Timing is great. And the absentee ballots and the vote by mail ballots, have, um, they'll start going out tomorrow. Sounds great, Diane. Thank you. You're welcome. Any more questions, Gary? No, nope, I just want to bring that out. All right, John, you have any questions about them? No, but I do on the next one, but go ahead. Well, I'm sure everybody does. Uh, <laughs> one of the favorite subjects in town, the bad, bagged leaf collection, December 21 and December 5th. Uh, I'm going to preamble this by basically saying that uh, uh, our annual town meeting on July 11th, uh, which is not in the announcement section here, that uh, we asked the voters, uh, you know, uh, via a ballot question, as well as at the town hall, that whether they want to... Uh, basically spend an extra uh, additional $50,000 or save $50,000 by not having the traditional uh, uh, leaf collection done by our highway department. Overwhelmingly at the um, ballot, uh, it was overwhelmingly defeated that uh, people chose to save the money and not have, which historically is a very, very uh, coveted service, which is a, a highway department going around and sucking up the leaves by the side of the street. So that, um, uh, as a preamble to that, and I know some people are still disappointed in that, and I hear about that, but that's what the town voted for, the annual town meeting, and the, uh, both of the town meeting as well as uh, particularly the ballot. The ballot was overwhelmingly in favor of not continuing that, by the way. So now the announcement itself, well, Wenham has partnered with Casella for two rounds of bag leaf collection this fall on Saturday, November 21, and Saturday, December 5th. Please contact our Department of Public Works with questions at 978-468-5520, extension six. Leaves must be placed in brown paper bags and leaf bags or loose in barrels. I didn't know you could do it in loose in barrels, I guess so. Bags of barrels must be on the curb by 7 a.m. on collection days. Do not use plastic bags for collection. Do not mix brush and sticks in with the leaves. Loose leaves on the curb without being contained in a paper bag or barrel will not be collected. I'm sure we'll hear a lot of complaints about this in about a month or so. Anyway, that's the announcement. Uh, Jack, the question I have is, it, it, this seems like a pretty straight up uh, format to follow for anybody, uh, but I have heard two or three times that there's some confusion with what Hamilton does. And I don't know if that was just hearsay that was going around or uh, not. Uh, I don't it's know if you know anything. I, I haven't heard that. What is the confusion? Well, I didn't know. That's I didn't have time to uh, pursue it. Uh, but I said, I said when it, when it comes up with us, I'd ask the question. Anthony, you don't know of any confusion with Hamilton, do you? No, other than the fact that they may have different days that they're doing it. Um, no, I don't know any. And people should uh, residents should just adhere to our November twenty first and December fifth. Yeah, are they are they doing the bag collection similar to what we do? I believe so. Um, Just maybe yeah. different days or something. Yeah. Okay. All right. Enough said, I guess. Uh, well, I'm sure a lot of people are still unhappy with this, but you know, the voters decided at our annual time meeting on July 11th, and there we go. Next. Okay. Thank you, Anthony. I mean, yes, Anthony, you're next. All right. Uh, thank you. I just have one thing that I want to bring up, and and then I want to yield the rest of my time to uh, Fire Chief Kavanaugh. So after 35 years with the uh, Wenham Fire Department, Lenny Thunberg will be retiring. Um, over the course of Lenny's career, he has mentored many young firefighters and served as a role model to several others. During his tenure, the fire department could always count on him answering the bell and responding to whatever scene he encountered. So um, if Chief Cavanaugh, I believe I saw him on here. Chief? Thank you for having me tonight. 
I would like to take this time and recognize the retirement of Lenny Thunberg from the Wenham Fire Department. On September 30th, 2020, Lenny will have served with the Wenham Fire Department 35 years. Wow. Lenny played a key role as one of our main daytime responders. The department could always rely on Lenny to arrive on scene and get the job done. Whatever task that had to get accomplished on the fire ground, whether it was pumping the truck, operating the ladder, or going in a structure fire on a hand line, Lenny always did it without complaint. The knowledge and skills that Lenny has taught to the younger firefighters shows the dedication of his training to make the fire ground a safer place. Lenny will truly be missed at the station and on the fire ground. So with that, congratulations, Lenny, on 35 years of dedicated service to the town of Wyoming. Would you like to hear from Leonard? Absolutely. Yeah. Let's, let's hear from the young man. Young man, I don't feel young anymore. <laughs> well, wait a minute. I, I do understand, this is John Clemenzi. Uh, I do understand that you and the chief came on the department about the same time. Uh, when he was a year ahead of me. Year ahead. Okay. okay a year ahead. Uh, boy. Go ahead. It, Go ahead. It's been an us. honor and a privilege to uh, serve on the Wanham Fire Department for the past 35 years and, um, and doing something for more than half your life is uh, a little difficult to walk away. But state state laws are state laws and but I'll still be around town, making sure everybody's got water for their sprinklers. Thank you very much. <laughs> Lenny, thank you. Thank you. Well, Lenny, John Clemenzi again, uh, it's been an honor to have you here. And you're like, you're like the, the cornerstone to, to a building. You're irreplaceable, but um, we will, and we will miss your day-to-day -day activity and the experience that you bring to the table all the time as the chief was saying. So thank you so much for all your years of service. And Lenny from Gary Cheeseman, I just wanna say you've been such a great role model for the younger firefighters to have served 35 years is just extraordinary. Thank you for your service. Thank you. This is Jack Well, and one of the things you can't do in Zoom, uh, we could do uh, prior to Zoom is basically welcome you at the town hall uh, with the fire department uh, colleagues and other people who want to wish you well and have a, a ceremony that we're having uh, virtually in Zoom. And I regret that's possible because of the Zoom business. So that uh, anyway, I wish you well as well in your retirement. Thank you. Congratulations, Lenny. All right. Uh, okay. Oops, oh, sorry. Let me switch so the consent agenda there's nothing on the consent agenda jack so we'll skip to new business well you also had the town administrator's report so you don't have anything to report so uh, that's that why was it referred. that was yeah okay so new business uh item number uh b what happened to a i wonder uh, a was the consent agenda on the new business it says b but okay you know that uh all right, so uh, annually, normally after our uh, town elections, uh, which we had on June 25th this year, we would have a, what we call the reorganization of the Board of Selectmen. Uh, normally the uh, positions are uh, filled for a year, and this year they were extended uh, with my colleagues' permission longer than that. But tonight, I'm calling for reorganization of the Board of Selectmen, as we have historically done a little later than normal. And I'd like to begin uh, by basically uh, moving uh, that we appoint uh, Gary Cheeseman as the new chairman of the board. Do I hear a second? Jack, I will second your motion um, emphatically because um, I think he is the right man for the time. And uh, my schedule has been nothing but miserable, both personally and uh, business-wise. And to have the activity that uh, it takes in today's <clears throat> world, um, it, it seems like Gary 
has the ambition and the uh, cap time capable capability to do that. Not speaking for you, Gary, uh, that's up to you uh, if you want to take this on. Uh, and uh, this, this COVID issue has been a very, very demanding uh, situation uh, for you, Jack. And I know you've been under tremendous pressure uh, for at least the last five or six months now. And, and it is, it's almost a no-win situation. So uh, I will support this uh, strongly. And I, I do hope that Gary will uh, consider taking this, this responsibility on. Uh, John, is that a second? It is a second. Okay. So uh, one more um, before I ask Gary if he'll accept it. Uh, obviously, one of the main reasons why I recommended Gary is because he's a fellow Air Force veteran, although he's an officer and I was a non-commissioned officer, but nevertheless, he's a fellow Air Force veteran. I'm just joking about that. So Gary, you accept that nomination? Yes, uh, thank you for your confidence and I'll accept the uh, chairmanship. Okay, we have to vote formally in this. So all in favor, Gary? I'll go, aye, uh, yes. John? Aye. Jack Wilhelm, I unanimous congratulations, Gary. Thank you, Jack. You got it from here. All right. So the uh, further reorganization of the Board of Selectmen, uh, we may have a vice chairman and a clerk, but uh, I would say that uh, the vice chairman, we have uh, two very qualified personnel here. So uh, perhaps we should just split that uh, vice chairman into vice chairman one and two in case we have uh, any uh, absentees on a given night. Great. Yes. That I agree, be, Mr. John? Chairman, uh, John here, uh, uh, because the, the responsibilities of the chairmanship have been so heavy, over, like I said, over the last six months that I think sp spreading the load out uh, further is, is the right thing to do. All right, sounds good. Then I'll uh, I'll make the motion here that uh, we make uh, Jack Wilhelm vice chairman number one and John Comenzi vice chairman number two. Do I hear a second? I'll second your motion. Second that. All in favor? John. Clement Clemenzi, aye. Uh, uh, Gary, I just have a slight revision to that. Right. I agree. I think it should be a vice chairman. Uh, first vice chairman and second vice chairman instead of one and two. And okay. So you know, first, that, yeah. well, you changed the nomenclature there in the motion to a first vice chairman and second vice chairman. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, was that uh, you calling for a vote? Uh, yes, calling for the vote. John said aye. Jack. Aye. Jack Lone says aye. And Gary Ice. Yeah. And the last position is clerk. And uh, given the, um, the uh, sequence of events here, that uh, coming from one town meeting into the next one, I've been working the clerk's job and think that uh, that's pretty much uh, limited to the minutes. So uh, I know the two of you have contributed greatly over that over the years and uh, not too inclined to do all the paperwork. So I would propose that I just uh, maintain the clerk's position too, so that uh, I can do the minutes if that's agreeable with John and Jack. I would enthusiastically support that. All right. John? I would also enthusiastically right. support that. All right, so I'm glad that you uh, pass on the paperwork and I'll make the motion then that uh, the uh, clerk's position uh, be uh, nominated to Gary Cheeseman. Do I have a second? Second. And a uh, roll call vote, John? Aye. Jack? Aye. Gary, aye. So that's I just Please. Just a comment that uh, the, uh, the public might not know that you are still the existing clerk. Uh, you have been the clerk for the last three months. Yes. You're going to continue in that role. So that's right. not, nothing new. Right. Thank you. And I would, uh, I would like to add to the commentary regarding the responsibilities that uh, under my many years of, uh, as a selectman, uh, there is so much work going on that people have no clue of uh, until it finally comes to the table. Uh, but I have spent an enormous amount of time uh, outside of the Board of Selectmen meetings, uh, interviewing uh, people and trying to get people onto different committees and commissions uh, and taking care of other issues and problems uh, before they even come to the table. Uh, and I know Jack has been doing that. And I know Anthony, uh, uh, Gary, you've been picking up the pace just in your short term, uh, short time frame that you've been on the board. So 
uh, just a cue to the public that there's a lot more that goes on behind the scenes that uh, not, nobody even knows about until it actually makes the table. Very well then. So I'd just like to make a comment that uh, these yeah. uh, appointments are effective immediately. <laughs> immediately. So uh, I need to finish <laughs> off the meeting here then. And uh, John, why don't you proceed with uh, item number C, the uh, okay. update. Well, I think we need a COVID update because it seems like about every few hours or maybe a day, uh, there's some new information going on and coming from CDC, the governor, the president, uh, somewhere. Uh, so I don't know if- uh, Is Mary uh, Beth online here? Yeah, is Mary Beth uh, with us today? I am indeed, thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> so good evening, everyone. Just an update to begin with on where we stand in terms of case count in the town of Wenham. Uh, I'm pleased to report that we have had no new confirmed cases in almost two weeks. We have a number of identified close contacts who are currently all doing very well, and I'm hopeful that they'll complete their quarantine without incident. Um, so it's 32 confirmed cases of COVID-19 thus far, 10 cases, probable cases, which is just a case definition issue, and then uh, two confirmed uh, fatalities from COVID-19 among Wenham residents. And that has not changed for months now in terms of fatalities, which were very fortunate. So I would encourage everyone to please be very vigilant in continuing with the mitigation strategies. The most important ones are staying home when you're not feeling well, making sure that you wear a well-fitting face covering when you're out and about and going to be closer with individuals not of your household, closer than six feet, hand washing, um, either with warm soapy, with, uh, soapy water and friction or alcohol-based hand sanitizer and disinfecting frequently touched surfaces. So those are the key mitigation strategies that we all want to be working toward. I'm going to circle back before I talk about Halloween, which is coming up, and the guidance that we're getting from CDC and the Mass Department of Public Health, just to touch on the importance of uh, flu vaccination while we're in the midst of the pandemic. The getting the flu vaccine is something that will be really important on a number of levels. Um, it can help to reduce illness in and amongst our population. Uh, we don't wanna be fighting flu and COVID-19 at the same time. Additionally, it can decrease the burden on our healthcare providers, our local hospitals, as well as primary care providers, so that they're not dealing with as many people ill with uh, influenza. Um, so those are really important. We have a large supply of flu vaccine. We have high dose vaccine for our senior citizens, those over age 65. We have doses for adults 19 to 65. And we even have um, some doses of the flu mist, which is not injectable. It goes into the nose for those under the age of 19 that are supplied to us by the state. All of this vaccine is free of charge to residents when they come, but we are asking people as, as it said in the announcement to please pre-book your appointment. The reason being this is a drive-through clinic. So we really want to be clear that we're controlling the traffic so that it's safe for everyone coming and that we have the appropriate number of doses available for everyone that wants one. So please do take part in the flu clinic. So these um, slides, I'm very grateful. Sorry, that is my dog making his, his voice heard. I'm going to see if. <laughs> One second, she'll be right back. So we'll hear from the dog next. <laughs> the dog report. I don't think Mary Beth uh, uh, mentioned the dates. Did she mention the dates? I can mention that to you right now. It's Wednesday, October the 14th from 3 to 6 p.m and a little uh, preview, the traffic flow. Traffic will be coming from Perkins up School Street, and then the vaccination lane will be along school, uh, along the, ro the access road to the Central Administration Building, and then people will loop around the other side of Buker School and exit back out onto Perkins. There will be plenty of police presence to help control and guide the traffic flow and to keep everyone safe. 
Thank you, Thank you for asking that question, Mr. Um, to, uh, Selectman. Um, so we have been not a lot of specific guidance from the CDC or the Mass Department of Public Health. They're really asking us to continue to use the mitigation strategies. So physically distance one from another, I may not have said that. I, that, I might've forgotten that in the mitigation strategies earlier, but distancing one from another as we do seasonal activities. So this slide here is talking about um, some of the things we just talked about, physical distancing, staying home when you're unwell. Um, you know, if you're going to be participating in trick-or-treating activities, as you can see down here, if you have tested positive for COVID-19 or you've been exposed to someone positive for COVID-19, you will be in either isolation or quarantine. And so you should not be at the door handing out candy to anyone, you should be in isolation. Um, thank you, Anthony. So the next slide sort of talks about uh, the tips that CDC is providing and they segregate out different risk activities for Halloween. Also on that, um, you'll see these also for other fall holidays, you know, Thanksgiving and other things. So lower risk activities are really focusing on celebrating with people from your own household decorating or carving pumpkins. Um, if you're gonna do that with friends and neighbors, do that at a distance from one another, decorating your house. I mean, many of these things are intuitive to most of us. It's how many of us um, celebrate Halloween. So these are the lower risk activities. Moderate risk activities are when you're mixing it up with people from a variety of households, maybe it's the neighborhood. Um, so it's talking about one-way trick-or-treating. I'm sure everybody has seen traffic patterns are one way in the grocery store, in our town hall, traffic pattern is one way. The goal is to keep people from passing in close proximity to one another. Um, it talks about preparing things for individual service, thinking creatively about setting them out along the driveway for people to come up and pick up so that you don't have to have close contact with one another. One thing I will mention is a uh, big part of Halloween oftentimes is some sort of costume mask and the CDC is advising the costume mask does not take the place of the face covering. So you would want to have the face covering and they do caution that um, don't wear it over the protective face mask because it could make it too difficult for, for people to breathe. So think about using a fabric that might go along with the Halloween theme that you're trying for. Um, more moderate risk. Mo more moderate risk. So this talks about, you know, visiting outdoor activities, making sure that you maintain distance when you experience th them. If you have a Halloween movie night, they're advising if there's going to be screening, spread out more than six feet. So something to keep in mind. <laughs> that a, that's a good one. Yeah, for that's for haunted houses and scary movies. Um, although if you're within your own household, you can snuggle up and scream to your heart's content. Um, <laughs> higher risk. Higher risk is, um, you know, so they're just saying that if you're going to have a traditional house to house um, Halloween trick-or-treating that is considered higher risk than some of these other things that we've talked about. A trunk or treat has been discussed. That's just considered higher risk. And so you just have to know that and be cognizant when you do that about being very fastidious about your use of mitigation strategies. In outdoor activities are always considered lower risk than indoor activities. And so crowded indoor parties are not a great idea. That's a higher risk activity for certain. Um, and I think, I think that's pretty much everything here. Anthony, we can probably make these available, right? Yeah, so there's a flyer that we have that we worked on with our partners in Hamilton. Um, yeah. So just a reminder, everybody's trick-or-treating is Saturday, October 31st from five to eight o'clock. We're asking that uh, for those residents that do not feel comfortable participating, if they just turn off that light in the front door between those hours, uh, the trick-or-treaters should respect the fact and skip over that house. Um, and then we just, again, wanted to just uh, briefly touch upon some of the low, moderate, and higher risks mm -hmm. activities. And uh, so people can make their own best judgment for their families. 
I think it's probably important to mention it was in the news that certain communities have canceled Halloween trick-or-treating. The two that come to my mind most readily are Springfield and Worcester. And those are higher risk communities. I believe they're listed on the state map as red right now. And that does not reflect Hamilton or Wenham, which is why we would not recommend that at this point in time. We're just advising the public how to try to minimize your risk and enjoy the holiday. Right. Well, sorry, Beth, uh, this is John. Um, for the general public, if they have further questions that they either missed or have a need to get answered, they can reach you at Town Hall. Is that correct? Yes. That's right. If they call Town Hall, um, they can take a message and get it to me, forward me an email, anything like that. Yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions that come up. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you, Mary Beth. And uh, for all the residents in Wenham, let's be smart this holiday because certainly both our school systems and our seniors and the public at large are depending on each individual taking on their responsibility to be safe. And let's tend towards that list of low risk activities. They're just as much fun as the others. So thank you, Mary Beth. What we got up next, uh, Anthony, is the uh, discussion for approval to accept a $5,000 grant from the Center for Tech and Civil Life this is a grant that uh, the town has been uh, very fortunate to obtain from the grant from the Center for Tech and Civil Life. This will help the town clerk on the upcoming uh, elections, providing uh, protective gear and assistance in uh, making this a safe election. So yeah. uh, do we have a formal motion on this? Yeah, Gary, just before we do that, I just want to give kudos to Diane Buco, who really went out there, got this grant, wrote the grant, um, did all it did really all the uh, behind the scenes to to make it possible. So Diane, I don't know if you want to add anything else to this. Um, thank you, thank you for that. Um, it was an easy grant application, which is wonderful, and the money is 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 going to be very helpful to help us get a lot of materials that we need for the uh, abundance of ballots that we're expecting. Well, thank you, Diane, for. Uh, getting that money to save the town quite a bit and also make for a very safe election. And uh, as you, we saw earlier, 17th of October is the beginning of early uh, balloting. So check the website and uh, get out and vote on this. Thank you. All right, so. Uh, all right, Mr. Chairman, uh, I guess I've got the next one. Right, you gotta do the motion. Oh, I gotta make a motion. Oh, yes, yeah, so that's right, yeah, yeah. All right. So I move that the Board of Selectmen accept the grant award in the amount of $5,000 from the Center for Tech and Civic Life and authorize the chair to execute the contract on behalf of the board. Do I have a second? I'll second your motion, Mr. Chairman. Any comments? Uh, nope, that makes great sense. Thank you, Diane. Yes. Okay, let's roll call vote. Jack? Yes, congratulations, Diane, thank you. John? Yes, please. And Gary, yes, uh, unanimous, thank you. On to the next uh, E. E, well, a long time in coming, but it's finally here. And this is the Longfellow uh, development pro project that had been on our books for way too many years, but we've gotten all the, uh, all the neighbors to pull together finally, and uh, we've gotten the engineering done and now we're preparing for, for a contract. So I would like to defer to Anthony to update us on this contract uh, that we're looking to, uh, looking, that you're looking to get uh, supported by the Board of Selectmen vote uh, so that we can actually engage the contractor to get the groundwork done before, before the frost sets in. Yeah, th thank you, John. So our, our uh, engineers at Weston and Sampson put the bid documents out um, and we had four um, uh, bid uh, submittals on that. Um, first one being a company called Tasco Construction and there's the uh, dollar amounts uh, all the way to the right, the totals with the alternatives. So uh, Tasco withdrew their, um, their bid we accepted their withdrawal. Um, they felt that they had a clerical error. So the contract uh, that we're looking tonight is to be awarded to JJ Phelan and Sons 
Company Incorporated. I know in your packet, I believe I wrote Tasco, so that was my mistake. But it is JJ Field and, and Son who is um, we're looking to have that contract awarded. And I just want to thank Jackie uh, and the gang for really working hard and, and keeping this project moving during these difficult times. So, um, and it's about fourteen thousand dollars more than the uh, previous low bidder. Right. <clears throat> How does uh, how how is Bill Tyak uh, viewing this? If I might ask, Bill, you on? Um, Bill's not on tonight, but I can see that this is Jackie Bresnahan here. That Bill and I work together with Weston and Samson on this, and <coughs> Bill and I, along with Weston and Samson, uh, dealt with the bid opening and re and all of the review of the scope of work and the plans. And Bill also came out and was a part of the site visit with us that we did for the contractors, along with Missy Berry, who works with the Conservation Commission. So um, this is just the final step. And then we're hoping to uh, meet with JJ Fallon out in the field sometime next week for pre-construction. So there's no surprises um, to be anticipated. Um, you know, the only thing that I think could be a surprise at this point is the weather. So let's just all keep our fingers crossed that we have uh, <laughs> another couple of uh, snow free months and we can get the slope repair done and then uh, look to the paving in the spring. So as long as the, the weather cooperates, I'm, I'm hopeful that we'll be proceeding quickly from this point on. Yeah, having been in construction for two or three decades, I uh, much uh, it, understand why the uh, sense of urgency uh, because you could get frost in and cold weather changes and lose a couple of weeks and then you're into November, December. So um, if, if these contract, if Bill is pleased with these contractors, uh, I would say I am going to be very supportive of the contract. Jack, any comments? One comment that uh, kudos to our uh, previous town administrator, Peter Lombardi. Uh, he put a, a huge amount of time and effort into this. And I know that Anthony inherited a project that was well underway. And I know he's long gone, but uh, nevertheless, uh, he deserves credit for uh, the tireless work he put in to pull this off. And it was very, very difficult, uh, I, I remember. Anyway. But you're absolutely right, Jack. Getting, getting the neighbors, the abutters to the table was the first huge hurdle and a good a good thank you to all of those folks too as well because they were supportive of the effort and finally understood that we're here to help better a situation and make it safer the danger up in that road uh, is historically very very difficult very bad it's a scary road i, I don't want to compromise. my god all my and uh, uh, our firemen uh, are scared to death to have to go up that road, particularly in the yes. wintertime. DPW, service contractors with oil uh, and fuels and so forth. Very good. Then let's move to the motion and the vote then, John. All right. Um, okay. I move that the Board of Selectmen award the contract with J.J. Phelan and Sons and Son Company, Inc., for Longfellow Road Improvement Project Construction Services in the amount of $199,810. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Any further discussion? None here. None all here. The, then all those in favor? Jack? Jack Wilhelm, yes. Gary? Yes. Clemenzi, aye. That's unanimous. Thank you, folks, many, many folks involved here. And yes, you're, I'm glad you brought up Peter because he really did spend a lot of time and effort uh, getting everything in place. And All very, right. so we're done with that one. Thank you, John. All right, moving on to a new business special town meeting, October 17th, 2020. Uh, Anthony, do you want to uh, comment on the... Uh, Citizens' petition as to the uh, reply from KP Law. Yeah, so I well, first I asked Dan Pascarello, who's been working with the Board of Health and, and both one of me and Hamilton, if he could uh, provide an update to the board where the work of uh, what he's been doing um, as far as uh, 
uh, what they were looking for to achieve in the petition. So Danny, Danny, you on, if you can unmute yourself. I am. Thanks, Dan. Um, <clears throat> so since we uh, appeared before you a couple of weeks ago, we've had a number of productive meetings, both with the boards of health and with the um, superintendent. Um, and just so you know, this, this did get put on the Hamilton warrant. Um, there were, I think, in excess of 180 signatures submitted in Hamilton for the petition. Um, but we had a very productive meeting with um, Superintendent Banos. We followed that up with a meeting with the uh, town manager for Hamilton and chair of the board of selects. Um, we then had um, some productive phone calls with uh, David Smith. Anthony, I know you were on one of the calls with us with both chairs of the boards of health. And, and what became apparent is that I think everybody realized there were some unintended consequences of how the boards of health had approved the guidance and um, we were all trying to move towards a solution. And I, and I think that we have one in progress. Um, last week, the Hamilton Board of Health um, voted on a motion to repeal the previous guidance and to restate it with a clear disclosure that it, it was not intended to be a mandate or order nor that it was intended to be binding on the school district. And that vote I think took place on the first. And I know that um, the Wenham board is meeting tomorrow, I believe. And I think that it is also on the agenda there. So um, the hope would be that both boards would um, approve that repeal and restate um, mechanism, which is something that uh, the superintendent was also in, in favor of. So that's where we are right now. Um, happy to answer any questions if anybody has any. And this is John, John Clemenzi. Um, I would like to thank you and all those others who took the time and made the effort to resolve this, uh, as I would say, off the main table and uh, uh, bring some, some sense to what seem to be uh, a very hysterical or becoming a very hysterical situation. And uh, so, and you, you, your presentation at our, I think it was last meeting uh, was really well done, sir. Uh, well, thank you, John. I, I you know, I, I also want to mention Bill Heaney in, in Hamilton, who has been uh, coordinating uh, the effort there. I know Bill very well. I didn't know he, he was involved, but that's, that's great. Jack, do you have any comments? I don't. All right. So, uh, Anthony, I just wanted to follow up that uh, so that the general public understands at the town meeting that because of the petition, this will be and is a warrant article for discussion. But the advisement is that it be an advisory if it goes to a vote in that case. That's right. Our town council has uh, gave her a legal opinion that it's an advisory vote at town meeting. Dan's aware of that um, as well. All right. Very good. I think we can uh, probably move on to the next. All right. Dan, thank you. Thank you, Dan. You're welcome. All right. So uh, we had talked about a possible purchase of electronic voting system back when we were looking at the July 11th town meeting. Uh, the uh, time frame there was pretty quick, uh, but uh, I think Anthony, you've called around to other towns and we've had a lot better background as to how this uh, electronic system would work and how well it has worked at other town meetings. You want to have some comments there? Sure, so uh, Joe and I, Joe and Hamilton and I uh, worked on this together and uh, uh, you know, the goal was doing it together is that we would purchase some, they would purchase some in the event that we ever need to borrow from each other, we have uh, similar units and can do that. So um, it made sense to do that. So after we, uh, we went out and got three quotations on various different uh, devices, we, uh, the, we found a company, uh, Meridia, who's used by eight other Massachusetts uh, towns of which in the packet, I, I did go out and ask um, my listserv uh, to comment on, on if they were using electronic voting, how it was, and, and this company in particular. And I, I got all favorable 
um, recommendations back from them. So this is actually the device that, that we'd be uh, looking to get. It's this one right here. So it's a just simple yes, no, or abstain, the, the carrying bag. This goes USB, we'll go into the laptop. So this is a radio frequency. So it just will communicate between the devices and that USB that's connected to the laptop. The black storage bag is where they'll be stored in. They have a, a coin cell battery, and that will be our only uh, expense going forward. Um, and those coin cell batteries are 16 cents a piece. So the, there's two ways that you can vote with these and display that vote. And one is, is what I call a summary. So um, what these devices will do is pre-program if it's going to be a, uh, a vote that's a majority or if it needs two thirds. So it would, uh, uh, as, as the voting occurs, this will be up on the screen. It would show the residents how the voting um, is happening, what the percentage is that we've reached uh, the necessary vote. Um, so that's one way I call this the summary. And then there's another way uh, that we could actually uh, do it on individual basis. I know that there's been arguments and not arguments, but people have commented on, well, this takes away the, you know, the people being raising the hand and holding the paddle at town hall and it creates a, creates a secret ballot. Um, so this is another way that it could be displayed where everybody's name individually would come up and it would show um, green for yes, red for no, or yellow for abstain. The thing is, if we actually did show this and there was the number that we had at the annual town election, those would be really small and really wouldn't be, view, uh, be able to be viewed uh, to see anybody's name with that. But it is something that we, we, we do have a record of of people uh, on, on their vote. So um, that's it with that system. The system would cost us about $17,000. It would be paid for using the CARES Act. I did get approval of the state. So I know Hamilton is going forward and actually placed their order. And because ours was over $10,000 and our bylaw requires the Board of Selectmen to approve that purchase. So. Uh, if it's something that the board uh, so chooses to move forward with, then I'd be looking for a vote tonight because if we were going to use it October 17th, I need to just get with the company tomorrow to uh, get that ball rolling. Anthony Clemenzi here. Uh, two, it's, I guess, sort of two questions. Um, one is, it, can you walk the, the folks and us through how this will take place on a meeting house floor. Uh, in other words, somebody's gonna to have to be given, each person's gonna to have to be given one of these, I take it. Um, and then where, you know, how it all transacts that way. And secondly, the security of these, um, what happens if somebody tries to vote twice or three times? Okay, so what will happen is, first of all, when somebody comes in and checks how other communities have done this and, and how the company has recommended that we do it, is as you come in to check in, you would be given the device, we would record that device number for that individual. So this way, if somebody was to walk off with it, we know who has it. Um, so that's how that you get the device. And then during the, um, during the vote, once you click, and I'll click back to show you that say yes or no. This screen up here will say um, accepted um, and let you know that your vote's been accepted. So that's, that's the way that you'll know. And then once the vote is done and the uh, election has been, it's been tabulated, which is now could gone from, you know, minutes to if it was a ballot, it could take an hour to depending, you, you know, it's now it's seconds. So, but that that's LCD screen is how you're going to know that your vote was accepted. All right, the part, uh, I guess a further question to that point is if someone accidentally trips or presses the button, um, is there a way of um, re, 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 uh, Change. yeah, changing that vote? 
you know, it, it's a uh, question that I, I didn't uh, I didn't bring that up, but I would assume what happens is is once they say okay, vote, the devices will become live, and then you'll be able to click it. So when they're not being used, you can't just sit there and you can sit there and press it, but it wouldn't do anything. Oh, okay. So they're activated at by the when the vote town, the, town moderator or somebody. Yeah. When when the vote is called, then they'll activate them and everybody will then vote. And then it goes off after that and waits to the next time. Correct. Next vote. Okay, thank you. Jack, any comments? No comment, Gary. No All right. comment. Well, I'm just, uh, this is Gary here. So I'm thinking, you know, given the size of our last uh, town meeting, 400 people, and the expectation that at least uh, perhaps into next year, it's still gonna be outdoors and that uh, sizable uh, people showing up for the vote that this is probably a good thing that it will expedite the whole process so that we will not be all together for that long a period of time. And also it'll provide a very accurate and quick count. And, and I know in past in uh, some town meetings we've had uh, votes and re-votes as the uh, tellers try to count hands up in, this, in the air and that becomes a problem too. So I would, uh, I'm in favor of this and uh, I would like to uh, go ahead and make the motion here. I move that the Board of Selectmen approve the purchase of the electronic voting system from Meridia Interactive Solutions using the CARES Act funds. Do I hear a second? Uh, I'll second, but should we put a dollar figure in there? I don't know, it's somewhere in the vicinity of 17, John. So it's, it's just, I need a vote just because it's over 10. So I don't have an exact dollar, it could be, could be just under 17, could be just over 17. So that's why I'm just asking. Okay, uh, should we do it not to exceed? You can say not to exceed 20,000 if you want, just to be on the okay. safe side. I'd like to add that in, amend that in, uh, Mr. Chairman. All right, so we will amend, amend the motion to say that uh, using the CARES Act funds not to exceed the sum of $20,000. Now, do we have a second? I second your motion and the amendment. All right, any other comments, Jack? I have one. I enthusiastically support this. We're moving forward to the 20th century with electronic voting. <laughs> Many of the uh, uh, improvements that you've already, you know, we don't have to have the tellers count again and again and again, and that uh, people challenge and vote. So that I think that's great and should shorten the uh, time for uh, the voting process. And so again, I enthusiastically support this. All right, let's go, go to the roll call vote then, John. Aye. Jack. Aye. Gary, aye. Passes unanimous. There you go, Anthony. Great. Thank you. We'll place that order tomorrow. Good. And uh, so the overview of the uh, setup for the special town meeting, same place uh, as the last one in July. Uh, slightly different, I believe, Anthony, that uh, we've uh, cut out the floor to save some money to uh, keep that CARES money going to other uh, purposes that can be uh, better spent on, but it looks like the uh, physical layout is going to be just about the same. You want to go over the rules, Anthony? Well, sure. It, it is the, the tent is smaller, so it's only a uh, hundred by a hundred and forty. So, and we can get two hundred and eighty-four people in that tent. I, I would hope that that will be plenty. But in the event that um, we we have more, or there is residents that uh, don't feel comfortable being underneath the tent, we'll have this section right here that's in a, a greenish color that will be um, barricaded off. So people could actually put their own chairs, but we're asking to stay in order to stay in the voting, uh, to stay within that area. So again, you'll come in, you'll check in, um, you'll check in with town clerk, uh, the, you'll be handled the end of the, uh, the voting clicker. Uh, parking remains the same over here. So everything else is the same. Uh, you'll, you'll gain access to town meeting from Main Street and Porter Street area will be again be the drop off and there'll be no access from Porter Street. There'll be additional uh, parking in the library if we need it. I, I think that everything worked out well last time. So, um, you know, no damage was really done to the grass. Uh, we've had an extremely, as, as Jack mentioned, very dry season. So the ground's pretty hard. Um, so we feel comfortable with this. And yes, we did eliminate the tent. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, the floor. 
the floor itself was it just was because so much floor is in demand because of the school. The floor was an additional $14,000, um, you know, for the hour that we were at town meeting and hopefully we're, we're only there for an hour or two this time. It's, it's something that we just felt that we really, as you said, Gary, could, could use those funds for a, a better cause. Um, so uh, everything else will be the same. It'll, it'll go just the way that the annual town meeting went. Sounds good. So one more reminder, that's Saturday, October 17th at 10 a.m. And uh, just like last time, do please uh, get there a little bit early so that the lines don't extend past 10 o'clock for the check-ins. So we can start on time and uh, finish up uh, fairly rapidly and get people uh, out of there. And face coverings are required and check-in starts at nine o'clock, as you said, Gary. Very well. Jack, bring, your books. bring your warrant book to town meeting. You should be getting that in the mail any day. Jack, John, any comments on the uh, town meeting? I, uh, I have an additional question uh, for, for uh, Anthony about the, the voting clickers. Um, it, not having heard anything about these before this, before this evening, other than we thought about it uh, some months ago, um, it, how tried and true are these other municipalities, uh, how, how well have they been received by these other communities for accuracy and so forth? Uh, haven't had any complaint. I think Diane's also checked around with some people and Diane, I think that you found the same thing. Yes, I did. I tried to find people not to like it, but everybody loves them. Diane's not a fan uh, of technology, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Diane. Uh, that, <laughs> that was one of the biggest concerns I had as I was thinking about it. So thank you so much. And and we need residents to, on your way out that tent, the same way they go in the tent, we ask you to go out that same way and there'll be collection bins that they can just place their, uh, their clickers in the, um, in the collection bins so we can sanitize them and have them ready for the next meeting. And as you said, Anthony, we're signing those out by number. So we knew who has which number so please don't forget that. Yeah, she can't take one for a souvenir, John. <laughs> All right. Any, uh, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> anything else on the uh, town meeting, Jack? Well, just a comment that I've, we've had, uh, I'm sure like both of you and John, we've had many, many uh, positive, enthusiastic comments about their annual town meeting. And that um, particularly we had, it was only an hour and 20 minutes and people were, very pleased the way it was organized uh, and that uh, I'm sure this will be a duplicate of that and that uh, enthusiastically we uh, approve the uh, proposed layout. Very good. So as you know, uh, we changed the quorum last week to 90. So we need at least a 90 plus to turn out for this and uh, hopefully uh, far more than that. And as we said, we do have the overflow area so we can handle quite a good crowd there. So let's come out and participate and don't forget voting. Anything else on the agenda tonight, Anthony? Um, yeah, the last thing that was added to the gender is uh, we need for the Board of Selectmen to take the, vote. Right. Yeah, we'll take the vote actually on the uh, election warrant. So um, that was an add on to the schedule. So the town clerk gave us the warrant that has to be executed and signed by the, the uh, Board of Selectmen and then have the constable post it. So we need you to uh, state that we're the election just with just that motion. And I think that we're going to be covered. Very good. So I move that the Board of Selectmen vote in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 39, Section 10, to execute the warrant for the state election to be held on Tuesday, November 3rd, 2020, from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. at the Bucher School, 1 School Street, 1 Mass, and to direct that the constable post said warrant forthwith. I'll second your motion, Mr. Chairman. Any uh, comments, Jax? Aye. All right, let's uh, move to the vote then. John? Aye. Jack? Yes. And Gary, aye. So uh, passes unanimous. And uh, just a reminder for everyone, now that we've got it uh, posted, to uh, either vote early, vote absentee, or come out on the uh, day to vote. Thank you. Anthony? Does that uh, wrap us up for tonight then? That will be 59 minute meeting and that will wrap it up unless there's any other matters. 
All right. Well, I'd just uh, like to close it out and say uh, thank you, Jack, John, for your uh, confidence in uh, electing me chairman and the public at large out there. You know, I'm uh, always available by email or the phone through the uh, town hall to give me a call with uh, over what uh, you need to talk about. Thank you very much, Anthony, and uh, good night to the uh, Wenham citizens. I motion to adjourn. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Clemenzi. Aye, Jack Wilhelm. Aye, uh, Gary Cheeseman. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night, everybody.